Hi everyone, did you know that it is possible to drill your own water well by hand? Today we will be showing you AMOS drilling, which is a method that is completely manual. So you don't need any electricity or another source of power. And you'd be surprised how deep these wells can actually be. Generally, we go up to 20 or 30 meters, but wells have been made of over 100 meters deep. So let me show you how it works. Before we can actually start with the drilling, we first need to dig a few holes. First we have to dig the mud pit, which we will fill with mud later on. Also a channel is made to lead to the mud pit, and halfway this channel another hole is dug. Next to this we will need a tower. This tower is erected and firmly attached. And there will be a lot of forces on this tower, so it is important that it cannot go anywhere. Okay, so now let's have a look at the actual drilling. As you can see, there are three people working, who all have a different task. The person on the left is lifting the lever, the person in the back is pumping, and the person on the right is doing the actual drilling. To understand how the system works, we first need to understand three key elements. The mud pump, the tower, and the drill stems. The mud pump is a fairly simple piston pump that will be used to pump mud around. Nevertheless, it has some clever tricks up its sleeve. To take a look inside, we must first open up the pump. The inlet of this pump is just a tube with some slots in it to prevent too much mud or rocks from coming in. There's a valve here, which is amazingly simple. It is just a marble that closes off on the inlet. That's it. It allows water to go into the pump, but not out of it. The piston has a similar valve, made from a marble. But the piston has another cool feature. Because we are pumping mud, the seal of the piston will namely wear down quickly. By tightening the end of the piston, the seal is squished, and its size grows. And because of this, it fits nicely into the tube again. So this way you can reuse the seal multiple times by tightening it more. But what I think is best about this pump is that you don't need any special tools or materials to make it. You just need to have some basic construction know-how and you need to know how to weld. And then you can basically make this pump yourself at home. And this applies to almost everything from the AMOS drilling set, which I think is really cool. Okay, now we know how the mud pump works, let's start drilling. The first meter of drilling is very simple. We don't even need our mud pump at this stage. Basically, the drill head is just used to scoop dirt from the ground. After some time, we can add some water to make it easier. But at this point, we still need to get out the drill to clean it every time. This will change. Maybe now is also a good moment to discuss the drill head. We are using this drill head, made from steel round bar. It looks a bit aggressive, but basically all it does is loosen up the ground and mix it with water. So after a meter or so it will become difficult to get the dirt to the surface. And you can imagine that removing the drill stems to clean them is quite a tedious job. Especially if you are 20 meters deep. And this is where the mud pump comes in. Instead of lifting the dirt ourselves, we will be using the water to transport the dirt up. We will connect the mud pump to the drill stems, such that water is pumped into the drill stems and exits at the bottom of the well. Here it mixes with the loosened ground and it flows up. Now at some point we will run out of drill stems, but that's no problem. We fix the tubes with a clamp so that we can unscrew the top and we add a meter of pipe, so that we can continue again. It is useful to add drill stems of one meter, because this is the working range of a person. But it is cheaper and less work to make longer drill stems. So for this we use another clever trick. We have only one drill stem of one meter, and the rest of the drill stems is all two meters. If the one meter piece is already attached and we need to add another meter, we lift out the drill stems and unscrew the one meter piece. 
then we replace it with a 2 meter piece. Now after adding some more pipes you can imagine that it will become quite heavy to drill. Imagine you are doing this for several hours. To help the driller there are a few tools which we can use and this is where the tower comes in. The first thing we can do is attach a rope to the drill stems. One person or even two people can pull on this rope to pull the drill stems up. Now the driller only has to move down and twist, which is still a heavy job, but much much better. If this is even becoming too heavy for the people lifting, we can switch to a lever, which is also attached to the tower. The idea is the same, but now the person lifting has the mechanical advantage of the lever, to make the work a bit easier. If you look at the person pumping, you might think, well that's the most boring task you can have in this whole setup. But there's actually a very important task that this person needs to perform. The mud management. It is important that the viscosity of the water is high enough. This means that it should be a bit thick or slimy. This can be done by adding drilling additives such as bentonite or barasol, but often using the clay you can find around works just fine. The clay we used formed hard clumps, so first we need to break this apart. You can even break the clay down inside the borehole, because well, the drill head is designed to break mud apart. The reason that mud management is so important is that if the mud is not thick enough, it might not bring up sand anymore. Sand namely sinks quite quickly in water. Without a thick drilling fluid, you can loosen up the sand in the borehole, but it will not reach the surface and it will just sink back, which is not very effective. Also it is possible that the water sinks away into the ground, and this might look a bit strange, but what actually happens is that we reach a layer which absorbs water very well. And the water can flow into the ground. So in this case the drilling fluid, or the mud, can go to the surface of the borehole to decrease the water loss. I'm sure by now you're just as excited about Amos drilling as I am. But to be honest, there are some limitations. The most important is that drilling through hard rock formations is not possible. If you want to make a well and there are hard rocks, in most cases you'll have to hire someone to do it for you, with a big machine. There are not a lot of great DIY solutions for drilling through rock yourself. You could consider percussion drilling, which might work, but as you can imagine this is very hard work and slow progress. On the plus side, if you encounter soft rock like laterite, you can actually drill through it, with the AMOS set. In order to do this we need to make just a few adjustments. First of all we change the drill bit. The drill bit on the left, which we used until now, is symmetrical. Now we will switch to an asymmetrical drill bit. Because it is asymmetrical, the point of impact varies each time, and this helps break the rock apart. Also, we change the handle. And this is the part I like best, because with the normal handle you have to endure quite some impact when hitting the rock. And this is just not great for your wrist if you have to do it for a long time. To fix this, a handle is attached with vertical pipes, which you can hold. Now if you hit something, your hands will slide slightly over the pipes, absorbing the impact. And the difference is really amazing. With a normal handle, stone punching is a very uncomfortable job, but with stone handle it's much much better. So at some point we have reached the desired depth. You can stop drilling if you are below the water table and in a good aquifer. So now we have a hole in the ground, but this is still very different from a good well. And there are some steps we need to take. Maybe the most obvious of all is the fact that we need to clean the borehole. It is filled with mud at this point, and at some point we want clean water from it. So we will be pumping in clean water to bring out all the mud.
now the drill stems can be removed. For this we use the tower again. The tower we use here is actually a simplified ladder. Normally for AMOS you use a tower that is a meter taller. The advantage of the bigger tower is that the drill stems of 3 meters can be used instead of 2 meters. And the ladder we use here would be too small to pull up these 3 meter pieces. But this ladder is much simpler and cheaper to produce, so that's why we used it here. Next we want to put a casing in the ground. This prevents the well from collapsing and we have more control over the water in the well. For the casing we use a PVC pipe of 50 mm and this is actually very small. Machine drilled wells are usually bigger and hand dug wells are a lot bigger of course. And the fact that the pipe is so small has some advantages and it also has some disadvantages. But a major advantage is that it is easier to go deeper because you have to remove less material. And this is one of the reasons why Amos drilling can go so deep. Ok, but back to the casing. The idea is that it is placed in a well and that in the bottom slots are made through which water can enter. Around the slots sand or gravel is placed because this lets through water quickly. Then the rest of the well is filled. Cloth is wrapped around the slots to prevent fine particles from entering the casing, such as clay. And we fix this with PVC glue. But the cloth itself is not made from PVC, so PVC glue will not adhere to it. But we just apply a good amount of glue and put on the cloth and tape it tightly. The glue is then pushed through the holes of the cloth and as it hardens it will interlock. Next we insert the casing. And normally you make sure to prepare your casing beforehand because you want to install it as quickly as possible after drilling. The well namely can collapse and sand that is still in the well can settle. And if you have a deep well you can easily lose a few meters just because of this settling sand. Sand is poured into the hole to fill the area around the slot. The sand should be clean without clay, because clay can hinder the flow of water. Ok, now there is one more step. The well will work at this stage, but we can significantly improve the amount of water that can be extracted by a process called developing. But we will need to wait till the next day for this. The mud used during the drilling has coated the walls of the well, which during the drilling was great, but now is not so great. The coating namely prevents water from coming in. Developing is a process that removes the clay particles and all the small particles that clog up the wall of the well. The idea is that we will do two things. We will quickly pulse to create pressure peaks in the well, and these can pull in the small particles into the casing, removing them from the ground around. Also we pump out the dirty water. By closing off the outlet we can create more pressure. Now finally the borehole is ready. Well done. But we do of course need something to get the water out. In our case we will use an AMOS pump, which is specially designed to fit in small boreholes. The pump is very simple and you can make it at home with just a few tools. It is made from PVC piping and has valves of, you guessed it, marbles. This pump is such an amazing piece of technology that it would actually deserve a video on itself. And you are in luck because we already made this video. So if you are interested in building one, have a look at that video. If you wish to know more about the drilling method, you can have a look at the YouTube channel of AMOS, where the inventor of the method explains in detail how to use and build the drill set. Then finally I would like to give one note of caution. If after watching this video you plan on drilling yourself, make sure you do your homework well. The consistency of the ground differs greatly per area, and in some cases it will not be possible to do the drilling yourself. 
Before you invest a lot of time and money, it might be wise to first look around and see if there are already other wells in your area and find out how they are made. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, you can post them below in the comments or you can contact us via our website. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.